This video shows you how to enter a fire pump in the FIRE program. The current project is a copy of the fire pump sample before project that is installed with the program. The word before means before adding a fire pump. This is the diagram for the fire pump sample before project. This is a sprinkler system that does not have enough pressure from the city water supply, so it will need a fire pump. The hydrant test data shows that the test static pressure is 20 psi and the test residual pressure is 12 psi. Now let's calculate results. Now let's open the print preview window and see the results. We can see that at the calculated flow rate, the supply pressure is lower than the demand. So this system needs a fire pump in order to boost the supply pressure to be enough to exceed the demand. By the way, the demand curve is always just a straight line consisting of just two points. The top point represents the required amount of residual pressure when the system is flowing at the calculated flow rate. The bottom point represents the minimum amount of pressure to make any part of the system flow any water at all. In this case, it happens to be zero. Here's the fire pump we want to add to our system. We will need to add nodes 95 and 97 in order to define our pump. A fire pump takes a position in the pipe network near and in line with the inflow node. It has both a beginning and an ending node number, just like a pipe section. The fire pump's node numbers cannot be the same as the inflow node number. This means that there must be at least one pipe section before the pump section. There cannot be any alternate water flow path from the inflow node to the pump section. So the pump section must see all the water flow that comes from the inflow node. Our first new pipe will go from node 100 to node 95. It has a length of 290 feet. Open the Enter Edit Pipe Data window so we can define our fire pump. We need to delete the pipe that was in between nodes 90 and 100, so click in one of these inputs to select the pipe. Click the Delete Pipe button in the toolbar. Click Yes to confirm deleting the pipe. Our first new pipe will go from node 100 to node 95. This pipe is 2.5 inches in diameter and 290 feet long. Our next pipe is the fire pump itself and not actually a pipe. It is in between nodes 95 and 97. Enter node numbers 95 and 97. Since this section is the fire pump, enter P for the material input. When we entered P to indicate a fire pump, the fire pump database window opened automatically. This window lets you enter data points for a fire pump's pressure versus flow rate curve. It may be that you are not able to obtain a pump curve for the candidate pump you are considering, but you have reason to believe that the pressure boost from the pump will be 50 psi, for example. FIRE allows you to directly enter this as a constant pressure boost on the pipe data window in the loss input that is directly below the material input in which you have entered P for the fire pump. When you are able to enter flow pressure data points for a pump curve, the word curve will be shown in the loss input below the material input on the pipe data window. But if you directly enter a constant pressure boost, the value you enter will be shown in that input instead of the word curve. Using the constant pressure option is not as accurate as providing a set of flow pressure data points to create a pump curve. However, it is a way to quickly try several different pressure boost options to see what effects they have on the flow calculations for any given pipe network. If you find that a pump pressure boost of 65 psi, for example, results in a satisfactory demand pressure from the city water supply, 
you can then review pumps from manufacturers that are likely to produce a 65 PSI boost in your pipe network. You can then enter a complete pump curve for a candidate pump and then see if the solution yields a pump pressure close to your target 65 PSI boost. For this fire pump, instead of entering multiple points for a curve, we want to just enter one constant pressure. So click Cancel. Now we want to enter our constant fire pump pressure of 20 PSI into the loss input. Our final pipe is this one from node 97 to node 90. This pipe is 10 feet long. Enter 97 and 90 for the node numbers. This pipe is 2.5 inches in diameter and 10 feet long. We need to mark node 100 as the inflow node, so click in the input for that node number. And now click the Mark Inflow Node button in the toolbar. Now let's return to the calculation window. Before we produce reports, let's check the Ignore Pump Boost in Calculation and Show Pump Curve checkbox. This will make it so the hydraulic graph will show a separate line for the effect that the fire pump will have on the supply pressure. If the Ignore Pump Boost in Calculation and Show Pump Curve checkbox is checked, the calculations will be performed as if there were no pump in the pipe network, and thus the demand inflow pressure will be high and never negative. However, what will be different is what the hydraulic supply and demand graph report shows. The graph will show the downward sloping public city water supply line, along with a combination line slash curve of the city water supply, and the pump output. This combination supply line or curve will hopefully be above the demand inflow pressure point required by the pipe network. Additionally, if there is enough difference in line locations, the supply line or curve of the pump alone will be shown. Now let's click the Calculate button in the Print Preview Windows toolbar to regenerate this report. The graph now includes this green line that shows the effect that the pump will have on the system. We can see that the green line is above the demand curve at the point of calculated flow. Now let's make it so, instead of creating a separate line for the effect of the pump, the supply line itself is modified to include the effect of the added pressure from the fire pump. Bring the calculation window back to the front. This time, uncheck the Ignore box, which will make it so the supply line on the graph includes the pressure boost from the fire pump and no separate line is needed. With this checkbox unchecked, the hydraulic supply and demand graph will show no indication that a pump exists in the system. Additionally, if the pump provides a great enough pressure boost, the theoretical minimum calculated residual demand inflow pressure may be negative. Such a result indicates that the pump is oversized and provides so much pressure boost that the inflow pressure from the city could theoretically be negative, and yet the system, when boosted with the pump pressure, would still have enough flow and pressure to meet all the design goals. To get rid of the negative minimum demand pressure, the pump would need to be sized smaller and provide less of a pressure boost. Click Calculate again to refresh the graph. Now the supply curve line includes the effect of the fire pump. And we can see that the fire pump does provide enough additional pressure to make the supply curve higher than the demand curve at the point of calculated flow. Now let's increase the constant pressure of the fire pump from 20 to 30 and see the effect on the hydraulic graph. Click Calculate to refresh the report again. With the increase in supply pressure, the demand curve has now disappeared. And we can see that the demand calculated residual pressure is negative. 
Some reviewers may not like seeing the reports that show a negative residual pressure. So if that's the case, you have a couple of options. First, you could simply reduce the pressure of the pump you entered on the pipe data window so that the demand residual pressure does not go negative. The second option is to switch to supply mode on the calculation window and generate reports again. Then the reports would simply show all outflows at each sprinkler node, showing that all nodes, even the hydraulically most demanding node, flow more than enough water. While a negative theoretical demand pressure can be mathematically correct, since such a negative pressure is impossible, you may need to make either one of these changes to get your design approved, depending on what the reviewer will accept. Lower pump pressure or go into supply mode. Let's change this pump from being constant pressure to having a pump curve. So we will select the pump from the pump database. Click the button beside the loss input. Select fire pump sample from the list. This is a fictional new fire pump that we added to the fire pump database. It's similar to the Taiko Super Pumper X55, but the pressure values are about half as large. Click the Close and Use Pump Curve to Determine Pump Pressure button. The pump data point curves shown on this window will be saved for this pump, and the word Curve will be shown in the Loss input, overriding the current constant pressure value of 40 psi. Click the Calculate button again to regenerate the graph. We can see that the pump we selected has sufficient pressure to meet the demand at the calculated flow rate. Let's return to the calculation window and make it so the pump pressure flow curve is shown as a separate line on the graph. Check the Ignore Pump Boost in Calculation and Show Pump Curve checkbox. The pump curve will then be shown with a separate line on the graph. Regenerate the graph again. The dark blue line now represents the pressure in the system from just the public water supply and without the pump. The green line represents the pressure that the pump adds to the system as a function of the flow rate. The light blue line represents the pressure in the system when including both the public water supply and the effect of the pump. Thanks for watching.